And so we've got it opened up here, and this is where the difference comes in. Hey, I'm Jonathan Sewell Sales at Mitchell Mazda on the boulevard in Enterprise. And I've been waiting for this. I've got a 2019 Toyota RAV4, and this is the XLE Premium. And I'm gonna compare it today with the 2020 Mazda CX-5 Grand Touring. But before we jump into that, go ahead and click the JSS down here at the bottom so that you can subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to ding that bell so that you'll be notified first of everything Mazda, competitive comparisons, and all the good stuff in between. Let's go. All right, this is one of the big boys in this segment. All small crossover SUVs have to go through the RAV4. So ever since 2013, when it dropped the spare tire off the back, it shot like a rocket with sales and really gave the CRV and everything else a run for its money. And this generation, and this is a 2019, the first year of this generation, uh, went a little more rugged, a little bit more cargo, and then of course updated the powertrain with the uh, latest setup from Camry and their uh, TNGA platform to uh, improve fuel economy, improve driving dynamics or the ride, and also pick up a little more cargo. So um, this is the XLE Premium. It was a trade-in here in 2019. And this is the uh, first trim that has a full uh, Softex interior. So I chose the Grand Touring in the Mazda CX-5 line uh, because this one has seven trims. This one has five. So this one is, uh, you have LE, you have XLE, then you have XLE Premium, it's number three. And this one is also number three in our line, but it's, so there's trying to be a, a similar comparison here. And we'll go over all the ins and outs on both of these vehicles, especially the RAV4, because I've got several out there on the CX-5. And then we can see how they compare. So let's get started on the 2019 XLE Premium and uh, go over a few uh, features and uh, see what you think. All right, starting up front, you'll notice the smooth Toyota emblem, which is part of their Toyota Safety Sense. Uh, now, the, this is actually a 2.0 system, so you have all the, the features you expect, the pre-collision, the uh, automatic emergency braking, the uh, adaptive or radar cruise control, also um, automatic high beams, lane departure, uh, you also have, uh, when that uh, adaptive cruise is turned on, you have lane tracing. So you can actually, uh, almost like a, an autopilot at some points. Uh, and then on the XLE Premium, as you see, we've got fog lights, you've got LED headlights, and then this is a little more rugged look uh, for the this new generation of RAV4. The XLE Premium also upgrades to 19-inch uh, wheels. And this is uh, what they call a super chrome. So a super chrome wheel. And um, you can also see the uh, chrome accents around, the nice chrome around this uh, turn signal indicator, color keyed mirror caps. Also, uh, this does have your smart key system. So grooves up top to lock, hand on the inside to unlock. Uh, locking gas cap. So uh, something that's uh, very nice. You see the shark fin antenna up top. So that incorporates some uh, connected services. And uh, we'll jump into that a little more as we go inside. Uh, you notice again, a little rugged and boxy, almost a uh, complete perpendicular line here uh, to get as much cargo room as possible in this vehicle. And of course, uh, sta a standard is a spoiler up top there. And uh, as you would expect on this XLE Premium, right under here actually you have a power lift gate of course a rear camera 
and this power lift gate is uh, memory adjustable so you do have your handles here but you can also set it and again I'm, I'm impressed here I'm 5'10 and I've got I'll just show you here from my head I've got another couple inches here so the six foot tall guys uh, can fit into that really well and uh, of course everything's angled a little bit so you can actually slide underneath there especially in the rain and it keeps everything here protected um 60 40 split seats so this is your 60 over here this is your 40 here you've got a cargo cover here and um spare tire underneath this one also has a cargo mat so again, it looks like a, a large spare tire. It's a temporary spare, but it's full diameter. So 19 inch uh, wheels and tires on the outside. This matches up with that. So uh, you don't throw off any of the electronics. Speaking of electronics, this one of course has the Toyota star safety system. So you do have your traction control, your vehicle stability control, uh, all your braking system, analog brakes, um, your uh, brake assist, also your uh, electronic brake force distribution. And using that same system, this has what they call active cornering assist. So much like uh, the electronic stability or vehicle stability control, it uses the brakes and uh, some of the uh, independent wheel traction and engine uh, to help you in a cornering situation or a tight cornering situation to eliminate some of that body roll. So again, looking down the exterior one last time, you can see this one does have your uh, updated, upgraded roof rails. And uh, everything kind of ties in with the, uh, the actual, the um, smooth piano black there. And uh, got some nice rugged looking here. Uh, the body lines are really cut out and defined here for that rugged look. And uh, it's a good looking vehicle. Uh, the last thing we'll talk about while we're out here is underneath the hood here is a 2.5 liter. This is a uh, their form of direct injection. 2.5 actually gets 203 horsepower. And this is mated with an eight speed transmission. So the same setup as the uh, Camry that came out a couple of years ago. And so uh, under the allowances of the EPA, you actually can use the same rating as fuel. So it's uh, 26 in the city and 35 on the highway. And so um, this one being an SUV probably wouldn't get as good as the Camry there. But again, it's an eight speed transmission. So that really helps push it up to the mid thirties there uh, when you're going down the road. And that's an improvement on the previous, which was 31 uh, on the uh, top side there or highway. So uh, again, sharp vehicle. We'll uh, cover a few of the things on the inside and then talk about some comparisons as we move towards the uh, CX-5. Let's jump in. All right, so as I mentioned, the XLE Premium, and you can see kind of this uh, contrasting color look, uh, kind of a, a color block design, but you have um, a darker inside, lighter outside on your bolsters and your seat cushions. And this is a soft text or simulated uh, leather or leatherette system or uh, seat covers and uh, very soft, smooth touch all the way around, of course, on the uh, dash as well. And it's um, got your stitching there. So it, it really scales it up a little bit. Also, I wasn't really a fan rubbing my elbow on this stitching here, but it is a smooth kind of cushion and that same type of uh, leatherette system or uh, material. Uh, as you uh, look around, you've got, of course, a nice uh, streamlined uh, power window switches as well as your uh, side mirrors. And um, this being all new for the RAV4, you actually updated to the uh, latest steering wheel. So you have your cruise control right here instead of the traditional stem coming out uh, that we're used to on Toyotas for years. Uh, you also have a nice color multi-information display right up here, as you can see, and we'll crank it up in just a minute. And they're going with the uh, kind of tablet style, big uh, display here, floating display a little bit. And then if you look just across here, it kind of ties into the rugged look. I'm sure that some trims would have like a wireless uh, charging 
uh, for your phone, but you do have a USB up here and uh, then two 2.1 amps right here. And this is really, I mean, look, big cup holder area, very nice for, uh, you know, your big mugs and um, everything you want to have here. Uh, automatic climate control, big knobs. Again, this is very reminiscent of a truck to me. Uh, you know, the, the rugged gear shift right here. And uh, this, of course, has your sequ sequential mode. So you can uh, toggle uh, by bumping the uh, gear shift here through those uh, eight speeds. And, um, you know, just, just looks really good. This is a leather wrap steering wheel. Feels good. And let's crank her up. All right, so you can see that uh, multi-information display. Do have blind spot monitors, which I didn't talk about outside as well. And um, this is an automatic electronic park and brake. So what I like about this is when you put it in gear, it automatically, of course, I've got my door open, so it's not gonna like that, but uh, it automatically comes off. And when I put it back in park, it automatically sets. So. Uh, no toggling in between, just does it on its own. So that's pretty pretty good. And um, so you can see the display here real big. Let me go back into reverse. Uh, see if I can shut the door so we won't have that horrible sound. Nice big display for the, uh, the rear camera there. And, um, you know, positioned really good for your eye line. So if you're looking at the road here and just glance down, you can see those things. And not that you'd be looking forward when you're going in reverse. But um, again, for other uses there, it's got a really good uh, position. Also, as I mentioned before, uh, the map button, don't let it throw you off because it doesn't have built-in nav, uh, but you do have this apps feature here that will have some infotainment options through their Intune app suite. And you can connect a, um, a navigation from your phone. Of course, this also has uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, so plug it right in, be ready to go. Uh, nice home button here, um, so you can set up up to three sources, and this one's set up with your fuel economy, and uh, audio, and then a phone if you're connected here. So a lot of good features here on their Intune system. Uh, as we, I'm gonna turn this off as we go around here. So on this XLE model, you also have the uh, moonroof. So that's, that's really nice, uh, part of the upgrade there. Let's take a quick peek back here. Same uh, design of the seats carried over and uh, stitched really good, but you can see just how it's a little loose even up front it was. It's not really a, a tight or you know a, a tucked uh, comfort like we see on some of the Mazdas. Um, but again, I like this setup. You also have two more USBs in the back rear AC vents and fold down armrests with cup holders. So for the most part, and you can see these are actually leaning back a little bit. So we'll open it up. So there's your normal position there. You can see a little bit of a difference. So they do uh, give for that extra little recline. Um, so you can get comfortable back here. And of course you have uh, latch positions on your outboards here. So you can uh, make sure that everybody's child seats and everything is uh, just right. All right, let's jump over at the Mazda and compare uh, those features. All right, let's start with the outside of the CX-5, and I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. I will if you look up in the cards. I've, I did a pretty inclusive uh, review on the 2020 CX-5 GT, so you can watch that here. I do just wanna touch on a few things. Of course, you see our, our logo's big, bold, but uh, the purpose is the same. It's smooth with a radar behind it, so that's, um, you know, your, uh, distance recognition system, your automatic emergency braking, all those things, and your Mazda radar cruise control. Also, uh, as we're pushing near premium here, we've got a little bit more of, with the gold wing there for the uh, grill. Uh, also, one thing uh, that the, the Grand Touring has, uh, of course, the uh, full LEDs up front, but also these are adaptive lighting in there. So as you turn, it turns with you. And you can see the little LED, uh, fog lights down there at the bottom, which is standard on this model. So the first model that brings this uh, 19 inch wheels as well. So you go from 17s on the other models, uh, similar to the RAV4 up to 19s. And 
Uh, we're a little bit smoother here. Again, it's a little bit more sleek, not as rugged looking, and uh, really ties in with the chrome all the way around, and then the chrome rails up top. Now, of course, on the Sky Active chassis, when we're comparing it to the uh, TNGA of Toyota, this one has a McPherson strut independent, all four wheels are independent suspension, McPherson strut up front and a multi-link rear. And what does the CX-5 have but a McPherson strut up front and a multi-link in the rear. So a lot of good things going on for both of these vehicles. And um, but our uh, sky active design and then the exterior styling is just aside from this body line right here, it's just designed to be a little bit smoother, handle that uh, wind management as it comes around over the top, all the way out the side there. So, um, the one thing I haven't talked about yet really is uh, these two reds. This is the Ruby Flare Pearl, which is an upcharge, and this is, of course, the beautiful designed to be the most beautiful red in the uh, auto industry, the Soul Red Crystal. So this is a pearl, this is a metallic or a crystal with uh, of course some special paint treatment with actually a colored clear on it. Um, so you do have this little sleek hidden LED turn signal right here, color keyed mirror caps. Uh, this is the advanced keyless entry for Mazda. Of course, we've seen on the CX-30 and Mazda 3 that there are some updates to be had. Uh, we'll probably see that on the next generation of CX-5s. For now, you just push to lock or unlock. Go around in the back. Of course, uh, rear um, LED lights. And of course, the same power lift gate, which I think we must be locked here. <laughs> but you still have the same power lift gate. Let's see what we got. All right, now that we're unlocked, same rear power lift gate. And just to compare the two, I'm gonna stand right underneath here. And I've got about an inch, inch and a half on this one. So uh, kudos to the RAV4, you get a higher lift gate there. Um, and we'll talk about some dimensions here in just a minute. So of course the CX-5, uh, which actually the RAV4 had on previous generations, but it's a 40-20-40 split. And you can see that, yes, those rear seats do recline a little bit of a, a give there like they did on the RAV4. Of course, we've got the uh, handles back here. So you can just let those down as you wish, um, pull them all the way down. And we'll talk about, uh, again, some specifics as far as cargo and things in just a minute. Of course... Underneath this hood is our 2.5 liter Skyactiv G engine, um, 186 horsepower. And uh, this fuel economy uh, with our six speed transmission is uh, 25 and 31. So uh, RAV4 with their eight speed and their 2.5 liter modified direct injection is uh, 203 horsepower with 35 miles per gallon on the highway and we're 186 with 31. So um, again, a couple of good things that Toyota's doing. And um, you know, again, real world stuff, we could, we could jump in that and look at uh, fueleconomy.gov if we want to see if people have reported. But you can see that again, the difference, and I haven't compared curb weight, but this one just looks a lot more truck rugged. And this one's just a little bit more sleek uh, like you traditionally would see in an SUV. All right, let's check out the inside. So of course the Grand Touring, you're gonna to upgrade to a few things, uh, well, in this model, but they're standard. The first one is the uh, full leather seating. So um, stitch really nice, uh, color, color match stitching, but you can see how this is tucked and different for a little extra cushion. And also the perforation would give you a little extra cushioning and it's genuine leather. Um, one of the differences, and of course, the um, as Mazda continues to push more premium, you're going to have features like that. Um, you have memory seating here. Both of them had power seats of uh, eight-way. So, um, you know, something going well there. The Grand Touring, uh, the Bose is standard. JBL is an upgrade or option. Uh, again, this may not be directly the competitive. You could also have a conversation with the Touring here on uh, against this RAV4 XLE Premium. Uh, but again, with seven trims versus five, it was just hard to find that match exactly. And we'll go ahead and crank it up here so you have a little bit bigger 
on the Grand Touring, of course, a little bit bigger um, LCD right here. And let's turn this air down. And so you have this big digital speedometer here with a little bit of information on both sides. Um, also, a little bit of a outdated infotainment system. So you can add some different apps and things like that uh, for uh, the setup here with applications, but it's not as intuitive as the, uh, yeah, we've had severe thunderstorms around. So it's not as intuitive as the Intune, um, but you also don't have to have necessarily a standalone app for it either. So, you know, there's some convenient features there. Of course, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, um, your, your setup here, automatic climate control, smaller knobs, and then of course the Mazda Commander control. So after a few miles per hour, this uh, screen up top is uh, no touch. So you have this Commander control, again, sleeker, more like uh, some of your luxury or Highline vehicles like Toyota's Lexus, for example, with uh, your little joystick control there. Also this uh, electronic parking brake is not automatic like on the RAV4, so you can still engage it or disengage it. And you do have an auto hold uh, which they both had, but uh, it's not automatic. So uh, depending on what your preference is there or where you live. Um, everything's gonna be up here as far as your controls. Here's for your uh, cruise. So same kind of setup uh, as the uh, Toyota. Um, let's take a peek at the back real quick. And I, I can't remember if I mentioned this, but of course heated seats are standard here, optional on the uh, RAV4 XLE Premium. Let's just pop back here in the back. Still got this down, but of course you have the uh, fold down armrest here with cup holders, a little device holder, and you have two USBs for the rear in that armrest and the rear vents. So very similar to the RAV4 as we take a look. Now um, shark fin antenna for styling and um, satellite radio. So uh, now we come down to, we've compared a few things, but let's uh, talk to the nitty gritty. Let's uh, break down some of the uh, interior space, interior cargo, and uh, see if this uh, rugged, bigger uh, design on the RAV4 actually pays off for space and cargo. So I'm gonna jump inside and do some quick comparisons. All right, before I jump inside, I, I do wanna say that these are almost identical in size. So uh, when we talk about the wheel track, it's uh, almost exactly the same. The wheel base is almost exactly the same. The overall length is almost exactly the same. The overall width is almost exactly the same. And I'll uh, put those numbers up as you're watching these. So uh, everything's very similar. And again, that's a similar chassis size on both. Maybe some shared ideas or technology since Toyota and Mazda have partnered up more so now. Um, so everything that you see here on the outside is gonna be very similar. So um, let's jump inside and see what differences there are in the layout. You're talking about SUVs, you're talking about passenger space and cargo. So the first thing I'm gonna look at is this back seat. Now I've got this, just for comparison's sake, I've got this all the way back. So with this seat all the way back, and again, I'm 5'10", and this seat's leaned back a little bit, but it really doesn't have any bearing on my knees. I've got good room here, a couple inches probably, touching just the way the seat sags. And of course, I put my feet underneath. So um, good room back here. I actually, with these seats back, yeah, it'd be comfortable if I'm wanting to lay down, but I'd probably actually rather be propped up a little bit. But uh, great headroom as well. So even with the allowing the, um, you can see the light back here, allowing the moonroof to get hidden under this portion, still a great headroom in this vehicle. And um, let's go next door and see how it looks back here. All right, same test. Uh-oh. <laughs> Gonna have to slide in here. So I've got this seat all the way back. And I don't know, I should have done something with the seat back, I guess. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so this is the best I can do on the CX-5. So if you're looking for back seat room, I'd have to give it to the RAV4 cargo. So we at first talked about how this design might give more room back here, uh, cargo room. However, in fact, when comparing these two vehicles with these seats up, there's right at 31 
uh, cubic feet of storage in here. So 31 cubic feet with the second row up. And again, just looking at a couple of things right here, we've got uh, just from that distance of the bottom of the seat, of course, these are reclined. So you're gonna give up some of that if you have a higher uh, item other than just some suitcase or some luggage. So it's about 40 inches uh, to this end here. So from that seat, it's about 40, 40 and a half inches. Now um, let's put this seat down. And we'll put the other side down. And so we've got it opened up here and this is where the difference comes in. It probably has to do with that extra headroom and leg room that we just saw. Um, so with that extra uh, room between the first and second row seats, this is actually about 69 inches, about 69 inches of uh, cargo room or cubic feet of cargo. And let me just on the fly here, slide this up to where it touches the seat there. And I know you're probably getting some pictures of just the carpet here, but as you can see, it's it's touching the seat and we've got a uh, total length here, about 66, 66 and a half if I was in the middle. So right about 66 and a half. You can take, of course, remove that cargo cover and have a lot of room there. So about 69 cubic feet in here. Let's jump next door. So on the CX-5, we're looking at this back cargo area with the second row up. And that second row, you still, very similar, about 31 cubic feet back here. So um, let's, let's put these seats down and see how that, oh, before we do, let's take a peek right here. So we had this little raised lip on the CX-5 to kind of catch or hold things from sliding around and, and slamming into the lift gate, which I like. Um, but right here in the center, we've only got 38 inches. So uh, with this raised lip, you actually, you know, are giving up a couple of inches there because you wouldn't be able to set something on top, really. Um, I guess you could to make up those couple inches, but it would be tilted differently. But um, so uh, direct, directly here with these seats, uh, all the way to the back there, it's like a cup, two, two and a half inches uh, less than the uh, RAV4, but uh, similar volume size here. Now, of course, one beauty of this is we just pull this lever. That seat's probably too far back over there. And that one is as well. So even though you've got leather levers, sometimes it's not the best case scenario when you've been demonstrating how much room there is up front. So let's put these seats up. Now, one thing to notice here is that uh, with the other seat on the RAV4 all the way back, oh, it's actually the seat belt's kind of catching it too, but the seat's ultimately going to do. But with the RAV4 all the way back, those seats were still able to be laid down. So that's a big difference uh, between, big difference right here in that second row space there. All right, so everything's down. Probably gave a little bit more room there. So with this down, on the CX-5, and again, I think it's gonna be that space in between those rows there, you give up or give to the RAV4 almost eight cubic feet. So this is right around 60, 61 cubic feet, and the RAV4 was 68 or 69 cubic feet. Now let's just open this up. And again, we're not in the center, but we're right at 69 inches, so somewhere between 69 and 70. I don't remember what we were at on the RAV4, and then, of course, I did have to slide these seats a little bit. So I've got that seat touching the headrest. So as far back as it can go. And um, so again, the RAV4 wins out in rear leg room, which also gives it about eight cubic feet more of cargo in the back with the seats down. Of course, you may be traveling with children or someone else that uh, rides in the back regularly. Thank you for joining me for this comparison video of the Mazda CX-5. And this is the 2020 Grand Touring and the Toyota RAV4, which this is the 2019 XLE Premium. Please like this video if it gave you any information that you feel would help you in your purchase decision. 
and comment below any questions or anything I've left off. I might do a, a, a drive comparison uh, on these vehicles in the next few days, weather permitting. Of course, we've been getting a lot of rain. Um, also, don't forget to uh, subscribe to this channel if you're seeing it for the first time and ding that bell for all notifications of everything else that comes uh, mostly Mazda, but with some competitors as well. I'm Jonathan Sewell Sales at Mitchell Mazda on the boulevard. You can always call and text me at 334-718-0504. And I really can't wait to see you not in one of those, even though it's a good vehicle, but I can't wait to see you in one of these, a Mazda. Thank you.